Hey, little skeletons, this is Gina from Weird True Crime. I wanted to stop in and let you know that we will not have a new episode this week, but we do have a podcast takeover. Our friends Courtney and Stephanie from their Terrified and Tipsy are taking over the feed today with an awesomely hilarious episode that we hope y'all love. And if you do enjoy them, please be sure to like, subscribe, follow, rate, review, all the things, and we will make sure to have their information in the episode notes. So enjoy, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Look at us looking normal. We're not normal. No. Ever. This wine is making my cheeks already warm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Already. Mine are usually the ones getting red. I feel them a little hot. Oh, 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 oh. Pour you some more. Cheers to Snoop Dogg. Cheers. Am I right? <laughs> am I am I right? Am I Am I right? <laughs> You're so white. <laughs> I feel there's a lot of pressure on me. Uh-huh. And I no. and I feel like people are looking at me. Only I'm looking at you. I know, but I feel like there's more than just you looking at me. Do you want me to look away? That would be even more weird. <laughs> like, why is she staring at the wall? It's like, I'm talking to the back of your head. Is that, is that, uh. <laughs> this is going to be fine. It's going to be fun. You're just telling me a story. It's going to be great. Yeah, but I feel like I'm by myself. Nuh-uh. Because you don't know it. And I just feel like... What well, let's I, be real. There's a lot of things I don't I, know. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of shit I don't know. But what if I fuck it up? You're not going to fuck it up. I might fuck it up. You're not going to fuck it up. <sighs> it's going to be great. You're just telling me a story. I'm so scared. We do that a lot. I'm so scared. Don't be scared. Okay. You ready? No. Hi, Courtney. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared. <laughs> Courtney's nervous today. Courtney, I'm come out from hiding. <laughs> I'm so scared. We love you, Courtney. I'm so scared. There she is. Oh, oh my hi. gosh. I feel like I'm really out of my comfort zone right now. No, this is great. True crime is your comfort zone. It is, but not in this forum. I just watch it for like my eyeballs and my earballs <laughs> enjoyment. Uh-huh. And this I'm trying to have everybody else enjoy it with me, but it's scary. It's not scary. You're just telling me a story and it's going to be great. So obviously this is our first true crime recording <laughs> episode. I'm excited. Courtney's nervous. It's fine. It's fine. She's going to tell us a little story about the true crime episode she watched. I'm hearing it for the first time, and I'm excited about it. Are you? Which sounds really bad because it's a true crime thing, so it's right. probably, like, really morbid. Well, I think it's no. I think it's just it's because it's a different thing for our podcast. Excited for us to record an episode together. Yeah. Regardless of what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, besides you being nervous, uh-huh, yes. how was the rest of your day? Are you okay? It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, this last weekend, Mm -hmm. um, I did something fun. What'd you do? So the breeder that I got my dog from, Mm -hmm. they have a, uh, what they call a a romp, Mm -hmm. a a doodle romp. (laughs) It's not dirty, guys. No. It's not dirty. No, not that kind of romp. No. (laughs) Not a romp in the sack. No. (laughs) Uh, no. It's for golden doodles. It's for golden doodles. It's for them to get together and potentially, like see their mom or dad again or brothers or sisters or whatever the case is. Did your dog recognize her siblings? Um, there was only one there. Mm. And for one reason or another, we just Kept missed each other. Yeah. Did so, you lose your dog? No. Great. She actually like wandered off and was very social with everybody, uh-huh. of course, because she's a golden doodle. Uh-huh. Uh, and then she came back. Oh. Then she went off in the other direction and like socialized. And then she came back. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that was fun. <gasps> That's cool. It was really- I would be really afraid. I'd be like, oh shit, which one of these doodles is my dog? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Okay. I, I had nerves. Mm-hmm. I was very nervous that I was going to lose my dog, but it's not like that. Like, they, they will make a signal. You hear this noise, you come back. <laughs> there was Let's one, practice. <laughs> there was one way in, one way out. There wasn't going to, there was nothing happening. Oh, good. It's, it's okay. Fine. Yeah. We did That's it. awesome. That sounds fun. It was fun. That's exciting. What your did, dog is super cute. What did you do? Uh, this weekend, I didn't really do a whole lot, which is fine. Oh, yeah. Which is great with me, actually. I want that. Yeah. This weekend, um, I have my baby's first pictures, <gasps> like her, her first birthday photos coming up. And can I'm making new cake. It? Yes, you are. I'm her so little excited. cake smash. Oh, I'm so excited. Can you believe it's her first birthday picture no. already? No. How can she already be one? I don't know. Hmm. But she is crazy and cute and she just is. a maniac, and she's just cute and fun. Just, I love her. Just like you. Yeah. Just cute and fun. Cute and fun. And also and a little bit of a maniac. A maniac. <laughs> yes, don't leave that out. That's important. Um, so for our true crime episode, 
Dustin got us some very fitting wine. Yeah, he did. He was like, hey, I got you something for your episode today. And we were like, what is it? It's the 19 Crimes wine, Uh which I'd heard of before. I had never heard of it before. I didn't know they made a white wine. I had seen red. Mm -hmm. I had seen a rosé here and there, but I didn't know they made a white. Yeah. It's called Cali Blanc. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. And there's Snoop Dogg on the front of it. I mean, how bad could it be, right? It's delicious. Well, listen, I, my standards were not very high. Look, it says Snoop up here. Oh, then, is it the, is <laughs> it's it the a neck? signature. Is that what it's called? The neck? The neck of the bottle. Is that what it's called, right? Absolutely. It says Snoop on the neck. Snoop on the neck. <laughs> um, yes, I did. Uh, with his face on the front of it, I was like, okay, we've got a celebrity wine that thinks that they can make wine. Uh-huh. Uh, no, it's, it's very delicious. It's really good. Yeah. I was like. Okay, I'm sure it's fine. Because I don't really like super sweet. Right. This has a little bit of a sweet, but sure. not too much. It's better than a Chardonnay. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're a Pinot girls. We already talked about that. Yeah. Pinot Grigio all day. Yeah. But we were like, okay, Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> I see you. It's I good. See, I see you, Snoop. It's good. So cheers to that. Cheers. cheers. Oh, how fun. We have our Tipsy Pod wine glasses, Aww. too. How fun. Look at us. So we're, on brand. We're feeling ourselves tonight. <laughs> all right. Before we hop in, should we chat about a couple of things? Please. Obviously, tipsypod.com. I got really low on you that really one. really did. Time. I got really high. <laughs> there was no middle ground between there. It's fitting that you got really high and we're hanging out with Snoop. I know. How fitting is that? <laughs> oh, God. So, guys, just live on our website. Everything for our show is on there. You can find all of our social media. Facebook, Facebook Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, TikTok YouTube. YouTube. Yay. You can find ways to support our show on our website. You can find yourself some Tipsy Pod swag. You can also go to tipsypod.com slash merch. Get yourself a Tipsy Pod shirt. Wow. I am conveniently didn't plan it, but I'm wearing a Tipsy Pod shirt today. You are. It's just the one that's all colorful and says Tipsy Pod. I feel like it's vintage. <gasps> is it vintage Tipsy Pod? It's like the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> I, it You're is welcome. vintage Tipsy Pod. Yeah. Circa um, 2020. <laughs> Real vintage. I mean, I feel like we've been doing this for years. Uh, it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> um, you can also find our Patreon. Patreon. Thank you, Courtney. Um, we have four different tiers. You just pick the one that works best for you, but our top tier is $7 a month. And you get ad-free episodes, episodes different for everybody else. You get exclusive content. We've got a bunch of videos up there. You can vote for some Patreon picks. We do that once a month. We watch usually weird Patreon movies. Yes, so. we do. Just get involved in that. That'll it's be fun. fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, should we hop in? I think we should. Courtney? Yes, what, Stephanie? What did you watch this week that I'm excited to hear about? Okay. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? How else should I say it? I don't know. I'm going to go with it. Okay. Okay. So I watched, uh-huh. um, it was season one, episode five of Evil Lives Here. Evil lives here. Okay. Yeah. This is, um, it's on Discovery Plus. Okay. Um, and I'm not entirely sure, like, everybody's had, like, really, really good reviews about it. Uh-huh. I'd never actually seen it myself, like, any of the episodes on here. Okay. So I was like, okay. Well, is it, like, a series where, like, one through four made sense with it, or it's just its own no, no, no. standalone thing? It's its own standalone thing. Okay. In each episode, they talk about a different story. So there you go. Okay. Okay. So this one is called In Love with the Devil. Oh, that sounds fun. Isn't it? It's not a fun story. No. Okay. Before we start. Okay. I have some stuff that I wanted to present you with. Okay. Okay. So I want you to know where my mindset was before I present these Amazon gifts I purchased. I have some serious anxiety with a lot of different things <laughs> happening right now. I'm on like an emotional roller coaster right now. I'm oh, sorry. God. Okay. So I was like, hey, with these true crime things, Courtney's like the detective in the situation. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I am like the weird sidekick who just like is here. <laughs> and in the movie, everybody's like, is she contributing? No, the detective's doing all the work, but she's there. Is it comic relief? We don't know. So that's how I felt like our dynamic was for this first episode, right? Okay. So I was like, hey, Amazon, can I get some props? <laughs> Oh, for this situation. Of course, Amazon always delivers. Amazon knows me too well. This yeah. is the problem. It probably came up in your feed and you'd have to search for it. I was like, thank you, Amazon. <laughs> so I'll take pictures of this before we're done and we can post them online because Great. I think this is going to be fun. My me. face is getting hot. Okay. I don't even know what this is. I'm taking my headphones off for a second oh, just so I can maneuver around here. Oh my God, guys, I'm so terrified. Okay. She has a box. I have a whole Amazon box. Oh God. Okay. So I got you a detective hat. Oh my God. 
Guys, there's a hatch. I. Why does it have two? Because that's the front. Well, it doesn't really matter. But one's the front, one's the back. Oh, I think you're supposed to. Is it untie and you put that next to your ears? Is that how that goes? <laughs> is that a thing like that? I don't know. Oh my god, yes. Just yes. Also a pipe. <laughs> Okay, let me get my sidekick disguise on, okay? Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. This is Hold so on. dumb. Oh up. my, what is that? There's stuff happening. It's, oh. There's okay, guys. There's, there's something going on in her face. Oh, is it a beard? Oh my. <laughs> it matches your hair. I know, I bought it blonde on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little big. Oh, why? Why is this happening? Here's the thing. I felt like... <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was just kind of like you're not gonna be able to talk with that. No, it's already like kind it's of in your face. In my mouth too. I'll take a picture. I'll take it off. Um. So here's the thing. <laughs> I am the useless sidekick in disguise. Oh, in disguise. That's I'm that disguising is? myself for a useful sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> you look stinking cute in that hat. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That wasn't for me, guys. That was the hair that's in her mouth from oh her, my God. her facial hair. This is why I don't grow a beard. This is exactly why. <laughs> is it? Is it the reason the why? The only reason. Oh, I can't hear when I've got the things <laughs> on my ears. <laughs> Leave it for a picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't with you right now. You look like a, like a singer, like a like in a band. I'm like in ZZ Top or something. Something. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well. Wow. Worth it, right? So beardy. <laughs> she got real hairy. Over that the night. is freaky. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Here's the thing. I was searching on Amazon. I was like, okay, it's, obviously it's, the hair's it's everywhere. Everywhere. Oh my god, it's all over your shirt. <laughs> um, I was like, okay, obviously detective stuff. Easy, right? Of course. Then I was like, <laughs> for whatever reason, I was like, I feel like I need a beard. <laughs> That was what she went to. <laughs> and I did. And then I started like scrolling and I was like, there's blonde ones? Well, obviously I need a blonde one. It's not, it's not like weird having a black beard with blonde hair. That's kind of like, strange. <laughs> did, you hear, did you hear what you just said? That's the only thing that's going to look strange <laughs> is if I mix the different hair tones. So I got blonde. And then I was trying to find one of those like the, the, the disguise glasses with the fake nose on it. Right. Yes. It just didn't work out, so I just popped my regular sunglasses on and we were good. I mean, that just makes sense. All right, I guess we can hop in now. Oh, my God. <laughs> now that I'm all disheveled. <laughs> okay, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. have some on-screen text. We are in May 2011. Okay. And we're meeting um, a man named Brian. Mm -hmm. So he was arrested for an eight-year-old crime that he thought that he had gotten away with. And then we meet Bernadette, who is his wife. And she says that her marriage was a nightmare and that people didn't understand why she didn't leave him. Okay. Um, but she loved him and she felt that he loved her too, but there were signs. Uh oh. I know, right? Uh -oh. That's that's how we're gonna start. Never good signs, that's for sure. So we kind of go back in time a little bit, and Bernadette tells us how they met. So she met when they were 16 years old. Oh, young love. I know. It was summertime. Oh, of course. It was warm outside. Of course. A little bit of breeze. Hormones flaring. <laughs> Hormones flaring. <laughs> so she's going over to her cousin's house to go swimming, and Brian just kind of appeared out of the woods, is how she described it, which Made me very uh, uncomfortable. I don't love that. But she was okay with it. So he only like lived a few houses down from her cousin. That and she just like lingers and creeps in the woods? I don't fucking know. Was uh -huh. he watching her the whole time? We don't know. I don't like that. He might have been. So anyways, so they start talking, end up falling in love. It kind of moves a little quickly. This was the first time that any guy's ever given her any kind of attention the way that he did. Okay. Uh-huh. So he told her how beautiful she was. And instantly they like became inseparable. Like he always gave her compliments, always was like, oh my gosh, you're like grooming. The woman got it. Wow. <laughs> Manipulator. Got, Manipul it. got it. Okay. <laughs> wow, you really went down the dark hole. Okay. So and he would also he would write her letters, make her feel special. They both knew that they were gonna marry each other and they were 16 years old. And I said, wait a minute. 
<laughs> You're 16 years old. <laughs> That's me breaking. <laughs> I don't think you had to nope. explain that. Oh. Okay, I think we're I think we're good. Can I put the beard back on? Or? Yeah, I think you should. I think maybe you should, it would help. Okay. So one day they're they're taking a walk, and he told her like just randomly walking, randomly conversation. He told her that he has something terrible to tell her. He tells her that he's killed somebody. Oh boy. She doesn't believe him though. She's like, how could the man that I love and that I know everything about, how could he kill somebody? Still at sixteen. No, this was like after they've been dating for a okay, while. Okay. Okay. It's been a few years. Okay. I I think. I don't know. They didn't give me a timeline. Hmm. He didn't really go into detail. She didn't ask any questions, but he's like, I just need you to forgive me. Hmm. If you forgive me, all of this will be okay. I just want you in my life, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, well, she doesn't ask any questions. She forgives him and she fully didn't understand like what he had done because she didn't ask the questions Uh and didn't think that he was capable of doing something like that. Okay. We find out that he is. Clearly. We're, we're going to get there. Oh, boy. So Bernadette convinced herself that he didn't mean what he actually told her, uh, but the police felt a little differently. So how would you interpret that? Like, if someone you're dating is like, hey, BT dubs, <laughs> top secret. Right. I definitely killed somebody, but, like, please forgive me. Like, how do you chalk that up to just being like, oh, he didn't do it? Like, well, why would they say it then? Well, also, why would you... Like, wouldn't you ask questions? I, I would, yes. Who was it? Yeah. When did you do it? When did Why did you do it? Mm-hmm. Like, just general questions. Right. What no. were you feeling when it happened? What made you want to do this? When did this happen? Like, no. just even if you want to keep it light and conversational, not to scare them away, but like, ask anything. Really? Anything. No, no, they didn't ask anything. But now the police, they did give him a lie detector test. Okay. Which uh, you can opt out of, I've heard. So it yeah. doesn't really like hold much ground. Uh, right. But that was like, we don't know what the what the results were from it. And basically the whole case against him was dropped. Weird. After this lie detector test and not really interrogating him. Did they like say anything about how the police were like on to him? Did someone like no his name for anything? We don't get any of that. Interesting. Interesting, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So anyways, it went away. Okay. Are you you following me? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, okay. So Brian ended up proposing to her. They ended up getting married. So after that, they had, like, the white picket fence. They had the two kids, the the dog. Like, they had, like, this perfect life together. Okay. Um, And this was the happiest that she says that she has ever seen him. And she was like, of course, she's excited. She's happy that her husband is so happy with their marriage. Okay. Soon after, she notices some changes. So oh she says his attitude started changing um, from good to bad in, in an instant. Like, things would just change. In one instance, he pushes her against a wall and he, uh, said that he wanted to bash her head in and Ugh. watch the blood drip Ugh. down the wall. So this is where we're going. So this kind of, like, progressed pretty quickly in regards to his change of attitude. I find it and not hard having a to perfect believe life. that there were like no signs. Like how does someone go from like, I love our white picket fence. To, I want to bash your face in. Like, how do you go for that? I don't, I don't know, but I feel like there was, this was a progression and I don't think there she like be. went through the whole progression. Mm-hmm. I think this is just kind of like the instance where she's like, okay, this is not, well, he was probably manipulating okay. her for all these years. Of course. So, like she probably, he loves her. Like sure. that's what she thinks. He loves her. He right. loves her. And then she would be the person who thinks it's her fault if he acts out or something. Correct. Mm. So she, she, t- she tells us that she was blind to all the red flags that were happening. And now that she looks back, she thinks that she should have left. But she was blinded by the love. Which, mm. blinded I- by the love. <laughs> <laughs> so his expectation of her after they got married ended up being super high from when they were like dating. Okay. Meaning um, that she says that he expected her to be intelligent Always use the correct response when he asked a question. Oh, boy. Use the right vocabulary and the right grammar when she was talking to others. Like, it was, like, weird. Mm-hmm. Like, he was just on he her all the time. He became, like, a drill sergeant, like, overnight. Basi- basically. Like, he wanted her to act a certain way, and if she didn't, then she was going to get punished for it. What? She doesn't understand why all of this is important to him. And he tells her, not so nicely, that he doesn't want a wife that sounds stupid. Oh, Okay. No, oh. Another red flag. Oh, oh excuse you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, and also, like, because fuck you, but, like, I, <laughs> it's the same girl that he's been dating since he was 16. Right. So all of a sudden, because now you get married, now she becomes a fucking idiot? Yeah. What? I guess now that he can, he realizes that she can't go anywhere. I don't know. Now he can just treat her however he wants because she's trapped? I guess so. Oh, I hate that. I don't know. But he ends up getting, like, super angry because none of those expectations of her ever are, like 
real. Like, they, they never happen. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's a smart woman. She knows what she's doing, but he didn't like the responses that she was giving when she was talking to others or talking to him. Hmm. Anyways, so one time he didn't like the way she answered the phone. Was not him, but with somebody else. What? He started screaming at her. He was losing his temper, like, over small things um, more often. And Bernadette was, like, walking on eggshells, not knowing what was going to trigger him. And I was, I I don't like that. No. Like, at all. I don't That's like it at all. scary. And it's scary. Because clearly it's nothing. No. It's nothing. It's, like, minute things, and he's just flying off the handle. That's a scary environment to be in. Yeah. She was, like, giving examples of, like, he would get angry because the floor was dirty or there was a fingerprint on the TV or like just small little minute things that obviously we can kind of get the point that he was just overbearing and unhinged. Unhinged, yes. Yeah. So she said that sometimes, because he always lectured her and told her what she was doing wrong, some of his lectures would actually last two to three hours. That's verbal abuse. That is verbal abuse. And she worked too, so I'm not entirely sure. This had to happen like at night when she got home. Is she like in bed and she's like, okay, uh huh, yeah, and he's going off and she falls asleep? I don't know. <laughs> I doubt. That would probably piss him off. I don't think that happened. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, uh, yeah, I'm listening. What? Oh, uh, what was that? Yeah, uh huh. Uh. Well, she realized she's like, okay, well, this isn't. Obviously, if I listen to him and I let him just go on about his little rant, it'll be okay for a while. Yeah, but he's like berating her the whole time. I know. Well, I guess you just kind of got to turn it off. Ugh. I guess. Maybe, right? I don't know. Well, and I mean, she probably has been being slowly worn down by him over the years. Yeah. That like now it's at its peak that she just reacts the same way as she has. Probably. Ugh. Poor girl. That's really sad. I don't know. So eventually, Brian starts expressing his anger in more violent ways now. Obviously, we have like the gateway of just yelling. Yeah. And now we're just going to get physical. physical. She starts off the conversation and she tells us that she hates Mondays. And I'm thinking, oh, uh -oh. fucking hell. What's going to happen on Mondays? So apparently, he has become really obsessed with martial arts oh, and no. forced the family to learn how to defend themselves. Against him? Just in general, like... I think it was his aggression and being able to hit other people. Okay. I think that's kind of where that came from. But he also taught them how to, like, use a knife to defend themselves, <gasps> guns. Like, this was a whole, like, training thing on Mondays. Oh, wow. It lasted for hours. Is so, he the trainer? Yeah, he's the trainer. And it was mandatory. And it was, like, hours long for both because they have two kids and her. And him. So it was Ugh. the four of them, and they all had to do these three-hour trainings every single Monday. Oh, wow. It was mandatory. There That's wasn't fun. an option. Yeah. So crazy, uh -huh. right? So Bernadette was never good enough for Brian, uh, in her words, and says that he hit her, he abused her. And then with the kids, he told them that they were not allowed to take it easy on each other, like when they were doing these, like, boxing matches. And if they did, then he'd punch them instead. <gasps> Abusive. Abusive. That's what we're oh doing. Oh, my God. How horrible is that? Did he have, like, the same, like, gender kids or, like, boy and girl? Boy and girl. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's, like, that's worse. It's worse. Because then you know that poor girl's getting her ass Because hit. you know he's telling them to, like, punch each other as hard as you can. Well, yeah. And not for nothing. Like, I'm not saying, like, women are, like, you know, inferior or whatever. Obviously, I don't believe that. But, like, there is a physical element here where, like kids especially going through puberty and hormones I, this boy is going to be stronger right than his sister right i don't know <gasps> so i think he i think really he is younger up. but still i mean just phys physical being still yeah Ugh. so before long brian's violence wasn't limited to the boxing so oh she tells us there was a time that he actually bought everybody's cell phones and this was in, I think it was like in 2000-ish. Okay. So, I mean, cell phones were, were not like, yeah, not people a, weren't not used Not a to turn them. I was expecting. Bought everybody cell phones. Bought cell phones. Okay, so great. This not came grenades. Out of, okay, got it. Came like, out of okay. nowhere, right? <laughs> so she wasn't used to it. She left it in her purse. He ended up like calling her over and over and over again. She didn't answer the phone. Oh, boy. We know how that's going to go. Uh -huh. When he gets home, he gets in her face, starts yelling at her, ranting that she was messing things up. And then like, why didn't she... Why wasn't she the way that he wanted her to be oh boy. and live up to his standards? Like, he just wasn't, he wasn't hearing anything. Ugh. So anyways, so if she can't do that and live up to his standards, then he was going to kill her. <gasps> Escalated pretty quickly, right? Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> then he started hitting her, kicking her over and over again. Ugh. But then after, like, she fell to the ground, um, he would apologize. Manipulator! Oh my god! So he's apologizing to her, telling her that he loves her. He didn't mean it. He I'm didn't sure. mean it. Mm -hmm. 
She just needs to, you know, to fix a few things with herself. It's her fault, but he's going to forgive her. Mm. This guy. Mm. Garbage. This. Holy garbage. This douchebag. Ugh. So, but in her mind, she's like, he's never going to kill me. There's no way he can kill me. He loves me. But this is a perfect sign of an abusive relationship. Like, the person has been groomed for so long right. to yeah. make it seem like anything that he does to her is her fault. It's her fault. Absolutely. And Absolutely. then she feels bad for pissing him off. Right. Oh what a douchebag, right? Gosh. So Brian was about to give Bernadette her final warning. She was sleeping one night. Uh Uh-oh. She was woken up when Brian was standing over her, pointing a shotgun in her face. Oh, no. Oh, no. He tells her to get the fuck up, you stupid bitch. Oh, no. Uh Uh-huh. I'll kill you right there if you don't move. Oh, boy. A simple, like, hey, get up would be fine. Right. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know what set him up. She was literally sleeping. When she got woken up. So she has no what idea. What could I possibly have done? What Did could I, I done? snore? Right. <laughs> Did I fart in my sleep too loud? What could have happened? <laughs> you know, that happens. Sure. Especially when you get a massage. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, sometimes Relaxed. it just, 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 things just happen. Just lets it right out. <laughs> they don't mind. I don't think. If they do, I don't care. I'm sure they I'm do. I'm paying like them money. I'm getting boners, so I'm I sure a so. little, little toot here and there is not going <laughs> to upset the masseuse. A little toot toot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so Bernadette gets up, obviously. Yes. Um, He brought her downstairs, made her sit at the dining room table. He's waving the gun around as he, like, goes into this tyrant speech about all of the stuff that Bernadette wasn't doing right. And the kids aren't there at this point, like, down there. We No, they're not down there. I mean, it's I think it's in the middle of the night. Ugh. So, they're, no, they're, they're sleeping. They're in the house somewhere. Okay. But I feel like he's yelling. So sure. I feel I feel like they know him. Like, they're, they're just staying in the room because they're going to get the wrath if they're... They're hiding. Exactly. Yeah. So she is thinking that, you know, she she doesn't know what's going on or, or how this happened or what she did to make him like this. And at this point is when she was afraid for her life. Sure. I mean, there's a there's a gun involved now. Yeah. And right in your face. Completely irrational man losing his damn mind. Yeah. Yeah. He asks her, he's like, so is this ever going to happen again? Because in his mind, there's something that she did wrong. I don't know. But we don't know what it is. Right. She's like, no, no, no. no. I, I'll never do it again. Uh, not knowing what this is about. And he's like, good. And he storms off. So then the next day, he's all smiles. Oh, God. He says how lucky he is to have her in his life. She is the best thing that's ever happened to him. Please forgive him. But I can't. Ugh. It is so hard for me to watch these type of things with this type of abuse and say, why didn't you leave? But I I know in her world, she, she couldn't. And I always wonder in these situations, too, about, like, extended family. Like, if she had parents or siblings or something, or even if he did. Because you would think that the kids growing up, even when they were younger, would say something. Right. So it's like, if there is extended family and the kid was like, oh, yeah, dad made us fight again. Like, wait a second. Right. This is not right. Like, red flag for anybody? Like, can someone call, like, Child Protective Services or anything at least? Yeah. We learn a little bit about, well, we don't really learn about about her family in a little bit, but they talk about her family but they're not really involved like I don't know that's probably by design from him probably yeah he's probably like shut them out from her separation for sure because of the manipulation Mm -hmm. from there it just got worse she starts talking about the dog that she (gasps) loves so much that they I already love the dog too I just met him it was a precious dog Mm -hmm. she says that the dog ran out of the yard one time Uh, Brian got mad uh oh Mm mm-hmm so he took the dog in the backyard, <gasps> and right in front of Bernadette and her kids, he shot the dog in the head. <gasps> I know. Oh, my God. I know. It's one thing for a person, but it's another one for a dog that didn't do... They're so innocent. I didn't, they didn't do it. Well, she didn't do anything either. So anyways, he's irrational. And like, how fucking traumatizing. Oh, my God. I know. Those poor kids. Oh, so she... When he did that. And it's something that she loved, too. So he did it by design again. Of course yeah. he did. Mm-hmm. For multiple reasons. Mm-hmm. The dog was close enough that blood got on <gasps> got on her. And, of course, she was a complete wreck. But she couldn't show any emotion. Because if she showed any emotion, then she was going to get beat. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? And in front of your kids, too, you got to be a certain... Uh, I know. I, and she didn't talk about what they did. I'm sure they were crying. How they could they not they be? They would have had to have been crying. 
Oh, I don't know. No, I hate that. So she's really upset because obviously the kids were little when this happened. They had to watch this entire thing. And all Brian said to all of them was, this is what's going to happen to you if you can't follow directions. Oh, boy. What? Wow. I can't. Fuck him. Uh, Fuck him. Yeah. So in 2003, Brian wakes Bernadette up in the middle of the night for a second time. He hadn't slept all night. He said that... So he's real rational right now. He's real (laughs) rational. He probably hasn't eaten. (laughs) He probably really has to pee. Give this guy a Snickers. Take the gun. (laughs) Get a power nap in you, Brian. (laughs) Let's go. Yeah. Nope. Hadn't slept. So he wakes her up. Not with a gun this time. He said that he had something very important to tell her. And as soon as he said those words, she knew what he was going to say. So, and just as she suspected, he tells her that it happened again and he killed somebody else. (gasps) So, he he tells her now who this was and what what happened. He said that he murdered a prostitute and he stabbed her to death. Oh, wow. A real act of rage, actually. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, And this time she actually believed him, which was probably good. She She tells, I know, right? He tells her uh, not to say a word to anybody. And if she did, he was going to kill her. Of course, because I don't even know why he's telling her. I, feel I was like, going to say, what is this getting it off your chest thing? Like, I don't you know. just murdered the family dog. You're threatening your whole family. You killed somebody else, but now you need to like vent about it. I what is that? I don't know. Oh, you, she's going to be your therapy? Right. Okay. Get out of here. She's her own therapist. Fuck you. I don't- <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> she says that he went outside. He burned some things in the fire, like her clothes and stuff like that. Because I guess he had a bunch the prostitute's of prostitutes clothes. The prostitutes clothes. Oh boy. He tells her that she's going to take him to the bus station, and if people ask. Asked, she needs to tell them that they're having like a like a separation or a break for a while because he was going to leave gladly, right? Bye, bitch. Well, yeah, but you don't know where he's at or when he's going to come back. I think that would be my anxiety about but, like, it. If he leaves, couldn't you leave? Well, unless he's like monitoring. She, I don't know. He's probably too scared. Uh, exactly. So he leaves. And he wanted her to keep him updated on the news, like what she hears about, you know, this woman who he killed, because yeah. obviously she's going to make the news. Um, and basically anything that she finds out about him, he uh-huh. wants to know. Uh-huh. So she does. She, te- she so tells. So he leaves, but they're still in contact? Oh, yeah. He wants to make sure. So he's not really like in hiding. He's trying to hide, kind of. Okay. We find out. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. okay. So she did see the news reports and heard what he had actually done. And they went into detail as far as what he had done to her, as far as stabbing her. She saw this woman's face and it, she says it's like permanently burned in her memory, Aww, which I mean, why wouldn't really it be? sad. She says that she thought about going to the police, but was afraid of the repercussions on her family because he was actually staying with her family in hiding. What? Yes. So when he left on the bus, he was going to her family's house. Her cousin, because the cousin that she went to the to go swimming with, like yeah. at the beginning when they were 16, this was the same guy that he's actually living with. So if something happens, he can take it out on her family. Her family. And why wouldn't he? I would love to know the excuse he used to like stay in hiding with the family. Is it just like they're having a little break? Yeah. Because I feel like if my cousin, like my actual cousin's partner... It was like, hey, Steph, your cousin and I are going on a break. Can I stay with you? I would say, fuck no. No. My my cousin can stay with me. Right. But if you guys are having a separation, I'm on her side. Right. Sorry, buddy. Find someplace else to stay. I feel like he's a really good manipulator, though. 100%. And he probably knows how to modify how he says things. What he says and doesn't mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Ugh. So she knows that he wouldn't think twice about killing any of her family to protect himself. Yeah. So she did exactly what he told her to do, just to protect them. Mm -hmm. So he stays away for about a month, and there's no suspicion about him being the murderer of this prostitute. God, what a long time to crash on someone's couch. I don't really want to say prostitute. Sex worker? Sex worker. Yeah, that's probably better. I, I don't like the word prostitute, but that's the word she used. Could you imagine being like, hey, can I crash at your house for a little bit? We're going through something, and it's a month? Right. Oh, God. Like, no when to leave. No. Get I just, some signals. Bye. <laughs> There's a hotel down the block. I don't. Ugh, a month? I know. And he's got to be like You know he's douchey. a mooch. He's a mooch. And he's douchey. Yes. You know he's not buying groceries or anything. No. Not paying any rent. How does he work? You know he's sloppy. Oh. 
Actually, he's probably really neat and organized. He probably is. He yeah, probably meticulous. Very. He takes a shower three times a day. Probably. Yeah. yeah. All the blood off. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so he comes back. Nothing has changed. <sighs> so we can tell that she is having some regrets about not picking up and leaving with her kids while he was away. Of course. But her fear prevented her from doing anything. Sure, because I'm sure the fear is that if she leaves and he finds her, the repercussions are going to be worse than him coming back with She's going to die. There. Absolutely. Her, or her kids, kids are going to die. Yes. Exactly. So she knows from firsthand experience that he doesn't have a problem with punishing anybody. Oh so she told him one time in the past that she wanted to leave and she wasn't happy with the situation. She was basically just... Well, I know, that's probably not the best, right? But she was just basically saying she wasn't happy, she just wanted to go. Yeah. He tells her that the woman that he killed, the sex worker, yeah. um, he killed her because she reminded him of her. <gasps> and he said that he couldn't kill her because she's the mother of his children, so he killed this sex worker instead. Holy guilt. Yeah. So he tells her that if she walks out of the door, that he will kill her, and he will make it look like an accident. Which I personally, after all of this abuse, would probably think that he would not have a problem with that. And he's probably been thinking about this he's for a very, it. very long time. Sure. I can't. So Brian tells Bernadette that she needs to go buy a gun. What? I know. In his what? mind, like, it's so weird. So he tells her to go buy a gun when she goes into the police station, because I guess at the time you had, or in her county or whatever, you had to go into the police station to actually register the gun. Okay. So she goes in there on this police officer's desk. She sees the picture of... She's by herself? By herself. Okay. She sees a picture of the sex worker that Brian had killed, and it said that it was an unsolved case. And she really wanted to say something to this police officer. Oh. Like, she was, like, literally right there. Burn a day. I know. But she thought, why would anybody believe her? And what would Brian do? Those were, the, like, the two things that were in her mind that prevented her. WWBD, you know? <laughs> Stop. How did you come without that quick? <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to do that. Good for you. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> So now Bernadette, she's got a gun. She's mm -hmm. she's armed, and she actually thought about shooting him several times with it. Yeah. Okay. One morning, she had the chance to actually do it. He mm -hmm. was actually, he was, and I don't know if he took the shower just one time. I don't know, but she said he was in the shower, and this was like her one opportunity to do it. So I don't know. He only showered once. He only showered once. <laughs> How do I tell next year? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> So she was going to go in the bathroom. She had her gun. It showed in, like, the reenactment that she had the gun. She was going to, like, the door, and she couldn't do it. <sighs> she thought about her children, and what would they think about her killing their father? I think they would understand. But then she also thought, like, she's really thought about this, too, where she's like, well, if I shoot him, then I'm going to lose my kids because I'm going to go to jail. Sure. So, And then she's not much better than he is, who's threatening to kill them all the time anyway. I, uh, I don't know. So one day, something finally forced things to a breaking point. Oh, boy. So it's Monday. It's training day. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go to this training day. She In got, my head, I picture, like, the Rocky song. I know, right? So she got home from work. She pulls in the driveway. And as soon as she sees Brian and the kids in the garage, like, all suited up in their gear, of course. Um, she knew something was off. Uh-oh. Brian and their son, Chris were boxing together and their daughter Sky was actually off to the side just sitting by herself. She looked at Bernadette. She's got like this fear in her <gasps> eyes and like, mom, I need you to help me. Like one of those type of looks. So she runs over to Sky out of the car and she asks her what happened and immediately Brian jumps in the middle between the two of them and uh, he's like, this is none of your concern. Like, don't, don't talk to her. Uh, excuse me? So he ends up picking up a baton <laughs> stick like they use in martial arts. Yeah. And he starts hitting Sky across the back over Ugh. and over, like as hard as in the reenactment, it was like as hard as he could. He was just beating her. Oh, poor girl. Bernadette begs him to stop. Then he grabs her by the throat, tells her that he will kill her if she steps in again. He's lost his fucking Is mind. Is the garage door open? It's open. Whole time? Can neighbors not see a fucking thing? Well, in the reenactment, it's open. 
Well, I hope it is. So I don't, I don't think you would hear crying and things like that, right? Screaming something. Okay. Maybe the neighbors have heard all types of stuff from that house over the years. I don't know. I don't know. But Brian then goes back to train with Chris again. Mm -hmm. After a few minutes, he starts beating Sky again. So he's like going back and forth between training with Chris and beating Sky. Oh like with his baton. Gosh. And then every time that Brian turns away, Skye would mouth to her mom, Mommy, help. Oh. oh I can't. God, that hurts. Heartbreaking. It hurts. I hate that. So during one of the boxing sessions, during this time, Bernadette and Brian were now boxing <laughs> each other. And then from the, the corner of, I think it, the way the reenactment showed, it was like Brian's back was to Sky. And Bernadette could see Sky in the corner of her eye, like as they were like punching back and forth. And Bernadette says that Sky did something that she could never do herself, and she ends up running. She just <gasps> takes off, starts running. Oh my god! I know. How I just ah! Uh, I was so scared I know, for her. I, know. I was so scared. <laughs> run, Sky, run. <laughs> The cops end up coming to the house. Oh, thank God. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so the cops end up coming to the house, and Bernadette knows that it's either now or never. So she knows that once the cops left, Brian was going to kill them all. 100%. Okay. So they, like, the the police ask them, you know, if they knew where their daughter was. The police tell Bernadette and Brian that she ran to the neighbor's house, called the police, and this was the first time that the police had ever gone to their house. Like, Bernadette had never called the police before. Brian had never called the police. This was the first time. Sure. The police asked them if everything was okay there and if there was anything that Bernadette wanted to tell them. Are they like separate or together? No, they're all, they're all, they're all together. So she knew that this was her only chance. She breaks down and she tells the cops, she's like, yes, there's something that I want to tell you. She's like, Brian told me that he murdered somebody. (sighs) Then we see him handcuffed. They take him away, but she knew that it wasn't over at that point. 100%. So if he was going to be convicted, the investigators were going to have to have proof or a confession from him. Okay. And we know that Brian's not going to confess to anything. 100% not. So we actually see the actual interrogation footage of Brian. Whoa. And he denies everything. Of course. Said she's lying. Of course. Like, uh, what what do we think was going to happen? And then we see courtroom footage of Bernadette taking the stand and telling her side of the story about him murdering somebody. And she said that she felt so good getting this information and this burden off of her that it was like a just like a weight lifted off of her. Mm-hmm. So after all sides have been heard, the jury deliberates and they come back with a guilty verdict wow. of the first degree premeditated murder. Obviously. Wow. Okay. Yep. He's getting life in prison, no parole. So ending this whole thing, Bernadette feels that she can breathe for the first time in 15 years, but she's still dealing obviously with a bunch of trauma of these last 15 well, years of being kids, abused. Can mm-hmm. you imagine? Mm-hmm. She still says that she has fear of um, him like escaping. Oh my god. Which I mean, I would too. And especially not being on TV about it. Oh no. So she knows that. Him sitting in a cell, he's probably plotting how he's going to get out. And if he does get out, what he's going to do. And that's it. Oh, my God. I hope they've moved. I don't know. Far the fuck away. I don't know. They don't give me any backup details. They probably wouldn't. They'd be like, Bernadette is currently living in Fresno, (laughs) California. Like, what? Why would you tell people that? Don't don't tell Brian that. (laughs) Jesus. He's watching it in prison like, got you. I know. What? (laughs) Holy heavy. I know. Well, I'm happy no one in the family got killed. No, I know. I'm glad those kids are physically okay. This was Mentally, kind of, they've got some damage. This was kind of like a mix between like I survived and oh, Eva lives here yes. because she did survive. But oh, I feel so bad so for her. Sad. All the trauma and the therapy she, that she's going to have to go and through. kids who were, just grew up through that. Ugh. Little babies. So That's anyways. Sad. Courtney, you did a great job telling the story. Thank you, Stephanie. You did so good. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Yay. I'm sweating. Yeah. You did great. But you know what? What? You know what's in store for us next? What? Pizza. Pizza. We did it. Do you want to hear what we're watching next week? Yes. We're back to our normal movies next week. (sighs) So it'll be a duo. Don't you worry. Okay. 
Um, also, next week is my birthday episode. Birthday! Yay! Oh my gosh, it's almost your birthday. Crazy, right? <gasps> So this episode is actually coming out before my birthday. My birthday is April 29th, mm-hmm. but I think it's coming out the week before my birthday. So it's fine. That's okay. You just maneuver around some Patreon picks. We're good. It's <laughs> my birthday month. <laughs> you can have a month. It's easier for you because your birthday's in the beginning of February. That's so true. you can have like the whole month. I Mine's can. like the second to last day of April. So it's like, how do I have a whole month? That's like the second to last day. That's true. You can't have like a birthday celebration at the beginning of April. That'd right. be weird. And I can't claim May. No, it doesn't you can't. work that way. <laughs> I can maybe claim the 30th. So I get two days. I don't know. Right. So you get basically a week. I get a birthday. A birthday. Yay. You get one day. That's it. No more, no less. <laughs> Do you want to know what movie I picked for my birthday episode? Oh, please let it be good. Crossing my fingers, crossing my fingers. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Ah! Beetlejuice. <laughs> That probably hurt everybody's earballs. Sorry, guys. So obviously it's not a scary movie. No. But it's a real fucking good one. I haven't seen it in so long. Me neither. It's been at <gasps> least like a decade since I've seen it. Yeah. I'm excited to watch it. It'll be fun. I Let's see if Beetle it still Juice. holds up. I think it will. I loved it when I saw it. I saw it when I was a kid. Yeah. I loved it when I saw it. And I'm like, I haven't seen Beetlejuice in like a while, I should say. So I'm like, let's do my birthday episode. Woo! And I get to pick it, so there's no fucking rule. Oh. Yay. Oh, so basically you get to do what you want because it's your birthday? Yeah, it doesn't have to be a scary movie. It has to be a movie I want, actually want to watch. Okay, fine. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> do you want to hear the IMDb Maybe. synopsis for it? Yes. Okay, the spirits of a deceased couple are harassed by an unbearable family that has moved into their home and hired a malicious spirit to drive them out. Okay. That was pretty accurate. I mean, I vague, think so. But okay. We'll see. Well, anyway, live on our website. Okay. Follow our social media. I will. You can join our Facebook group. I'm That's on there. That's fun. You could join. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You are. I'll stop making comments. Don't stop. I love it. It's the wine. Uh, <laughs> Snoop. <laughs> uh, our Facebook group is different than our Facebook page. Follow both, but join our group because it's a little more interactive. We ask for buzzwords. We've got a couple lined up already. We've already asked for some for our um, my birthday episode mm-hmm. for Beale Juice, so we'll throw some in there. But get involved in the Facebook group and just live on our website. Listen to episodes on there. And she just come back next week for my birthday episode of Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yay! Yay! All right. Thank you, Courtney. You did a great job today. Thank you. Let's go get some pizza. Okay. Bye. Bye. I feel like I'm the only... Oh, sorry. <laughs> She's verbally assaulting me. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, you do? I look at my brother right <laughs> This is so funny. Oh my God. That is not okay. Did you not put this on before now? Not with the sunglasses. I can't. Right? I look like him. Holy shit. (coughs) Oh Oh God, it's in my throat. (laughs) I regret this. No, my God. Snoop Dogg, help me. Snoop. He'll always help you. He'll always be by your side. Only with like a joint or something. Oh my (laughs) God. Yeah, I'm going to text my brother right now in real time. Because this way if he responds, everybody has his uh, reaction. (laughs) Like, did you know you had a twin? That's really creepy. He's probably not even going to acknowledge the fact that I'm like wearing a beard. That beard is out of control. I'm a little jealous. You have a beard and I don't. I do have a hat. What if you are my beard? (laughs) (laughs) I really want to wear that one. What if my husband's my beard? Huh? Ah, that better? That's, better. that's better. Okay. okay. I was like, did you know you had a twin? Oh Let's see what he says. He's going to just shake his head. He's going to see it and be like, oh my God. He's, I'll tell you, he's not even going to question be like, why are you wearing a beard? He's going to be like, wow, we do. <laughs> we do look alike. <laughs> my brother texted back. Oh my God. What does it say? Mm. <laughs> he said, that's a handsome lad. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but I think he has too much hair to share with my jeans. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> he has a little thin enough top. So there's not gonna be any follow-up questions like why are why do you have a beard? I told you there wasn't gonna be. <laughs> he said, that might be your new look though. <laughs> oh my god. I mean it looks creepy. <laughs> I know. You look like you should like be ha- like have a, a like a an instrument in your hand. <laughs> like a banjo. A banjo. Yeah. So funny. Okay, so maybe a guitar. No, 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 it's fine. That picture is fantastic. Say, like, I do look pretty good. <laughs> Maybe I should grow a beard. <laughs> 
So Bernadette convinced herself that he didn't say what, or he didn't mean what he say. <laughs> Brian told her that he murdered somebody or told her that she, she, my fucking hell. <laughs> Brian told her he murdered somebody, yes. right? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel like I'm alone on the stage and it's freaking no, me you're, out. You're doing great, honestly. Ah. You're doing great. You're killing it. Not the same way Brian does, though. Okay. You're killing it. <laughs> Not killing people. No. You're just nailing okay. it. I'm going to try that part again, okay? okay? You're doing great. Get out of your head. You're doing a really good I'm job. I'm so scared. Stop being scared. You're almost done. You're doing great. I know. I'm sweating. My pits are all wet. <laughs> The spirits of a deceased couple are, um, sorry. Really? You had one line and you fucked it up? I had to read I a whole- I blame it on Snoop. A whole five pages that I had to do I'm by myself. I'm gonna blame it on being rusty. I didn't have to read my notes the whole episode. Now my <laughs> eyes can't adjust to my laptop. Snoop Dogg's fucking with me with a sub on blow. Snoop Dogg. Snoop. Okay, ready? Snoop. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it again. 